God is calling everyone to spiritually warfare and battle in the spirit. Everyone. Everyone. You will see the world begin to diminish in multiple places. We see the economy. They're trying to destroy the economy. And they will succeed in certain areas, but the body of Christ won't be touched. We will be blessed. We'll be the light. We'll be the sign and wonder to the world that Jesus is alive. What a time. It's awesome. And the things that are happening are phenomenal. For me and you to be alive right now is an honor. Don't take it in vain. But he says, come out from among them and stop touching those unclean things that interfere with relationship. You know, the devil knows exactly how to mislead us and use us and distract us very easily. We should always be a step ahead of the devil. If you're led by the Spirit, the Spirit tells you things to come. If you're not led by the Spirit, you'll easily be deceived. You'll cooperate with the world. We are not of the world. Our government is not of the world. Our government's a higher government. Amen? Would you turn to Psalm 19 for a moment, please? Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 19. In verse 1, let's speak it together. The heavens do what? Declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their word to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun. He has also done something else. He says, the heavens declare the prophetic message story of God Almighty, Jesus Christ. See, it's written in the heavens. It's already written. The whole story of Jesus is written in the heavens. It's called the constellations. There's 12 of them. 12 in the, in the spirit of the kingdom of God means government. 12. There was 12 apostles. Amen. 12 tribes of Israel. 12 constellations. There are three witnesses. Israel. The heavens. Amen. And the apostles. Those are all witnesses. Of the sending and coming of God Almighty in the flesh. And anyone, it's, anyone can understand it when they look at it and search it out. It is the story. It is planted in the sky for all creation to see and read. Virgo is the first one. It means Messiah. It was a virgin birth. The coming. Libra means Redeemer. Scor uh, Scorpius. Is judge. Sagittarius is savior. Capricorn means great sacrifice. Aquarius is the master lawgiver. Pisces means high priest, holy one. Aries is resurrection. Taurus, okay, means Lord of hosts. Means he's the head of the army. I can't even read my writing sometimes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Gemini means son of God. In Gemini, you have Adam and you have Jesus, son of God. Cancer means deliverer. And Leo means king of kings. So we see the whole story of Jesus all in the constellations. Amen? Go to verse 7. He said... The law of the Lord is what? Perfect, converting the soul. The law means his word. 
The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is what? Clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than what? Than gold, than money, than worldliness. Yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honeycomb and uh, honey and honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is what? Warned. And keeping them there is what? Great reward. And warning them... In keeping all of these things, there's great reward. He says, who can understand his errors? What does he say? Here it is. Cleanse me from my secret faults. He was going to God. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Quit assuming. Get the facts. Know what's what. Be led. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I will be blameless. And I shall be innocent of great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my what? My Redeemer. <laughs> Warning. To keep them, there's great reward. Now, there are personal warnings going out. There are local warnings going out. National warnings, what we call. And there are global warnings that are going out. God is releasing three types of warnings in all areas. He's visiting the prophets and telling to be released. And the words that are being released is warnings from God. God is vindicating right now. We don't see everything that's happening. But there's a tremendous amount of things happening. You're seeing more and more and more. There's breaking down. There's more rest. There's more children being rescued. People are coming out from the darkness into the light. In Hebrews chapter 3. In such a great time of warning, many are missing the signs. There are signs, warning signs right now. You know that right now we just completed the Feast of Trumpets, which we've entered the new year. Now we're in what we call Yom Kippur, or atonement. So it's called 10 days of awe because it's 10 days of opportunity to repent and turn from ways. Atonement means God's judgment. He's atoning. In fact, the final feast of atonement will be Armageddon. And the blood will reach the bridles of the horses. That's a lot of dead. And only Jesus can fill those feasts. In Hebrews 3 verse 7. Let's speak it together. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. In a day of trial in wilderness, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, They always go astray where? In their hearts. <clears throat> and they have not known my way, so I swore my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Remember something, that your heart is the core of desire. So he says, they go astray in their hearts. Why? Because their desires have changed. They put other things before God's presence. I'm going to say that again. They put other things before God's presence. They put work before God's presence. They put everything before serving God. And they've drifted. Does everybody get this? And they did what? Drifted. Verse 12, he says, Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart from what? Unbelief in departing from the living God. That means departing from his presence. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is deception, and his power is fear. For we have become partakers of Christ if we what? If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not what? Harden your heart. 
Do not harden your heart as in the what? Rebellion. Rebellion is associated with witchcraft. Beware. These are warnings from departing from his presence, not able to hear his voice, and neglecting these warnings. Many people are falling astray. They've actually become, they've fallen into what they call the spirit of Judas. Judas betrayed the kingdom. For what? Money. Does everybody get it? He betrayed Jesus for money. I'm telling you, be careful what you associate with and who you associate with. Money. Is a, the love of money is the root of all evil, isn't it? There's nothing wrong with being blessed. Man, I want everybody to be wealthy and healthy. We should be storehouses for the world. We should be able to feed, clothe, and shelter. We should be able to protect those in need. Rescue people from the streets. We should have enough wealth to do all of these things. But the enemy knows how to come and steal, kill, and destroy. There are many people that have been assigned to do certain things. And they started but drifted. In Revelation chapter 12. You know why they drifted? They neglected the warning signs. I know everyone in this room has gotten to a point at some time where they thought, man, I know I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Multiple times. Amen? Gosh, you know what? There was just something in my gut that just said, you know what? Don't do that. Don't buy that. Don't go there. We have a teaching, don't go there. It's really good. And see it through. And, and, and then we regretted it. Oh man, I can't believe I did that. See, the people are, the whole world is under such great deception, they don't even know that they're deceived now. Because it's been gradual. The devil just doesn't show up and say, hi, I'm going to deceive you today. He does it gradual, bit by bit by bit. People, the first thing that begins to happen, compromise then laziness, then selfishness. And the next thing you know, you're looking for another fulfillment besides God's presence. You know, the devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy in any way he can. That's his job, and he does it very well. And he's infiltrated every area, of governmental, political, military, in all areas. Their servants are all over. But they're being exposed and removed, bit by bit. Everybody knows, anybody that has any common sense, that this man that they call president is not the president. If he could remember his name, it would be a miracle. Hallelujah. Revelation 12, verse 1. Now, a great sign of what? A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head were a garland of what? Twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and pain and give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads, ten horns, and seven diamond dins, on his heads. Where is this? These are in the stars. Does everybody understand it? He's talking about the constellations. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Now we know that this is Satan's kingdom. The stars there thrown to the earth means angels. And a dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now the woman is not only Israel, but it's associated with a physical woman named Mary who was pregnant with Jesus. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up, raptured, to God and his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared for her by God that, she should feed, be feed, that he should feed her 1,260 days. That's three and a half years. That means the rapture 
the removal of the church also, will, when we go home, will be three and a half years left. That means we'll be here for the first three and a half years of tribulation. And it says here, now you got to understand that in the book of Revelation, he gives you a prelude, then conclusions. He tells you things that are going to come, and then he tells you things that are happening. In verse 7, he says, well, war broke out in heaven. Now, this seems to go back, doesn't it? Now, he's explaining it more. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was there a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, who called the devil and Satan, who does what? He does what? He deceives where? The whole world. Is he still doing it? Yes. The whole world, he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast with him. Those are fallen angels. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ has come. The power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Now, this is powerful because he said, and the power of Christ, that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit for each and every one of us to overcome every area. Again, this was a prelude of the constellations, 12 tribes of Israel, 12 apostles, 12 meeting government, Israel giving birth to Christianity. Think about that. Christianity came out of Israel. And there's a spiritual warfare going on. And it's going to get crazier. <laughs> but praise God, we are not accounted for the wrath of God. If people begin to recognize signs, see, there are personal signs for me and you. We get a quickening in our Holy Spirit. There's like an unction that says, oh, don't. Don't agree with that. Don't go there. There are warning signs. Every one of us knows warning signs. The first thing you might hear is, I don't want to do that again. You want to do that again? We know things that we shouldn't touch. We know things that we shouldn't see. We know things we shouldn't say. We know certain things we shouldn't think. All warning signs. With the conviction. Conviction is a warning. Amen? We should look for conviction. Don't avoid it. Don't hide from it. Get convicted. Praise God. What's going to happen? You're going to repent and you're going to turn. That's the beauty of conviction. It's a rescue. God chastens those he loves. He corrects them. Why? Because it's a rescue. So many people get so offended so easily. Why? Because they live in emotion and not in truth. There's a difference. God is trying to get us out of the emotional realm. Amen? Trying to get us into the truth realm. Crying doesn't free you. Hello? It's good for repentance if you're crying out to the Lord. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's truth that frees us. That's what the Word tells us. Truth. Crying may bring you mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. That means He's considering you. But until you get the truth and practice the truth, follow the truth, and manifest the truth, there is no freedom. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. So the conclusion of everything in, uh, for me and you is that the anointing of God has come. The sign has been done. We have the Bible that tells us this Bible is full of signs, warnings. And so many people don't read it. They don't know. They're still depending on CNN. They're still depending on the media to tell them what to do. Or somebody else instead of searching the truth out themselves. In Matthew 25. In verse 1. Let's speak it together. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. 
Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Why? They rejected the sign. What? They had no oil. It's that simple. They could have looked in the bottle and said, man, it's empty. They had no oil. They were not filled. Why? They forsook assembling. They did not get filled with the Spirit of God. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose, trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. For the, our lamps are going out. But the wise were too wise. And the answer is that no way. Lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. Listen, nobody can give you that oil. You must go get it yourself. And you get it by getting in God's presence through praise and worship. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. And the door was shut. And afterward, the other virgins came also, said, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he said and answered, Surely I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. They neglected the warning signs and compromised Christ's teachings and his word. And they missed the boat out. Does everybody understand it? See, there are many missed opportunities that people don't know. God is sending out multiple opportunities all, of, all the time to his children. But they miss them because their plan and agenda supersedes. Is everybody okay? In Matthew 24, while we're here, in verse 3. Valas, the disciples came to him, privately saying, tell us when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that what? No one deceives you. No one distracts you. No one misleads you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. There's many people uh, all over the place. Preachers, evangelists, pastors, all of them that are deceiving many people. And they're not telling them the truth. Listen, if you don't tell the truth, that's a lie. Amen? For you will hear of wars and rumors of war. Are we hearing of wars and rumors of war? We know that there's going to be attacks even against the United States. In fact, right now, the whole world's been attacked. Amen? By chemical warfare. Anybody seen chemtrails out there? They're real. Of course, they'll call you, uh, what do you call it, uh, a conspiracy maniac if you tell them about chemtrails. Because they're deceived, they think that you're deceived. But they're not willing to look. They'll make every excuse about that chemtrail. Let's see, it's, it's the third level of the atmosphere. No, that just... See, jet fuel dissipates. Chemtrails expand and fall. Hello? He says, see that you're not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are beginnings of sorrows. They are warning signs. All of them. All warning signs. Then he says this. He says, then they will deliver you up to what? Tribulation. So what follows tribulation is great tribulation. See, there are prophetic signs for me and you. We know that some of the signs are called the feasts of the Lord. And only Jesus can fill those feasts. But those are signs for me and you. Because when we see it fulfilled, we know something's getting next. Something's getting close. The next feast is called the Feast of Trumpets, which must be fulfilled. And that is going to be the removal of the body of Christ from the earth. When that's fulfilled, that is a, that's probably one of the greatest signs <laughs> besides Jesus' resurrection. But the world will see the whole body removed from the earth. So I would say it's probably the greatest sign that the world is going to be able to see. And when that happens, 
many people will curse God because they got left behind. Many people would say that we were taken by aliens because we were bad people, because we were goofy, peculiar. <laughs> but they're going to make up every excuse, you know, and I'm going to tell you the Pope is going to be left behind. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Is everybody Okay. Again, tribulation will be the greatest sign. And then we go into great tribulation, which we won't be here for, but the wrath of God will come forth. Go to Luke 21. Warning signs. Hallelujah. One of the greatest warning signs I, I really believe is for this country is that when the government comes against its own constitution and civil rights for people. That's a great sign. Now, of course, they made an announcement through the fake president uh, about a mandate that all employees, in fact, everyone's going to have to And uh, you know that ain't going to happen. And so in this, we are short on pilots. In fact, there are doctors that we are short of. Why? Because they refuse to be vaccinated. They're not showing up for work. There are many companies that were mandating their people to be vaccinated, and they lost their many of their employees that they said, okay, we're removing it. If your immune system is three times stronger than a vaccine, you have to be an idiot to take it. But anyways. See, because people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, they're not searching it out. They're not looking. They're just accepting anything that someone says. If you get off of those certain programs on the internet, and go to other programs that tell the truth. You can see that they're Christian. They're righteous. They're decreeing, they're decreeing many, many things. That, and they got all information. There are many websites you can go to and find the truth. And these people have been following it for years. Luke 21. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? That's good. In verse um, 25. Luke 21, verse 5. Warning signs. Everyone say warning signs. Don't miss them. Don't miss them. Hallelujah. Verse 25, let's speak it. And there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be what? Shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with the power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws Near, in other words, your rescue draws near, praise God. Signs prepare us of events to come. We should be looking at all of these areas. Signs. The Bible says it will be according to the days of Noah. Just like the days of Noah. When the days of Noah, there was all kinds of fornication. There's homosexuality, lesbian, all kinds of goofy stuff. All kinds of sexual perversion. That's why God destroyed him. He destroyed him with water, but this time he'll destroy with fire. Go to 2 Peter chapter 1. People, places, and things are still operating. It's still a warning sign. Be careful of people, places, and things. Amen? Amen? 
2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 11. Or verse 1, I'm sorry. Let's start at verse 2. 2 Peter 1, 2. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now, what is grace? God's plan of escape. So he said, let the plan and peace be multiplied to you. As his divine power has given to us, what? All things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Great grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge of Christ with promises of benefits to those righteous followers to access the partaking of his divine nature to overcome all deception and fear. And I'm going to say that again. Verse, uh, verse 4. By which has been given to us, what? Exceedingly great precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. In other words, he's missed the what? Warning signs. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will what? Never stumble. So why do people stumble? Miss the warning signs. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now sometimes we see the signs, but we try to stretch it, compromise it, justify it. Hoping we get away with it. Hello? Did you ever see a yellow light turn real red real quick? He said, man, I can't stop. You know, punch it and go through it. God, I hope I got away with that. <laughs> but the warning sign was there, right? Hallelujah. For some of us, we have to deal with that, you know. Praise God. But we don't want to compromise these things. We want to accept these things and follow these things through. And take the right action when these signs come. Amen? He says again, grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. With what? Promises and the benefits to those righteous followers who accept the warning signs. Why? Because they will have, be able to partake and access partaking of his divine nature to overcome all deception and fear. John 15. You know, everybody seems to know when they're starting a cold. And you know what? I, I just believe I'm getting... I, you can sense your body fighting. I, I'm, does everybody understand that? Man, everybody in this room should know when your body's fighting. Amen? I'm glad you all agree on that. And you know, someone just say, man, you know, I can sense my body fighting. Why? You sense a weakness. In your, in your body, you sense a, and all of a sudden you can start sensing certain things that, you, you, I know many times you can get real stupid, you know? I mean, that, that, that fog comes, oh, you can't remember nothing, you know? You're trying to, it, you don't anything, you, you can't, you, the only thing you can do is pray in the spirit until you bust through. You feel like, gosh, God has not left you. He's still there and he still hears, Amen. That's what we have to decree and fight through and battle till we break through. Amen? Praise God. But we all go through it multiple times. But you know, the first time it happened to you, it was like, huh. And, but you learn from the warning signs. So you start loading up on vitamin C and Theraflu and all kinds of stuff to try and combat so your immune system gets built up. Amen? And it will shorten if you do get sick. But don't claim it. 
Don't go around telling everybody, man, I feel terrible. Shut up. Amen? Because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you want. Become. I just don't feel good. Okay, don't tell nobody. Hey, I'm a little under the weather. Praise God. What weather are you under? Does everybody understand it? So many people will call, man, you know what? Just look at, ask someone to pray with you. Anoint yourself. Call someone. You know, pray with me. I'll never forget one time, man, I was, with my wife and I were leaving. We were going to the airport. And you've probably heard the story already. I was feeling terrible. And my wife could tell I wasn't feeling good, but I wasn't saying anything. Man, we got to the airport. I wanted to die. She looked at me. She goes, you're not feeling well, are you? I said, babe, cast that spirit out of me. And she started praying for me. I said, no, look in my eyes and get rid of it. So we're in the airport. She grabs my hand, looking in my eye. I command that spirit of sickness to loose and leave my husband right now and go to the pit in Jesus' name. I was fine. I got on a plane, no problem. See, people keep thinking that sickness isn't spiritual. It comes from the spirit realm. Hello? And they make things here in this world and flus, but they're living antichrist little things. Amoebas, I don't know. That attack the human body. But it isn't of God. Amen? The word says this. May the Lord bless you and be healthy and prosperous as your what? Soul prospers. So there's got to be a conversion all the time of your soul being renewed and being refreshed. You don't go to the phone, you go to the throne. Amen? Amen? Quit trying to figure out how to heal yourself and go to the healer and get direction. Lord, you're my healer. You're my provider. How do you want me to handle this? You know, there'll be even times when he's going to tell you, you know what, things are going to get a little worse. What do you mean? I'm I'm telling you. One day he said to me, I I wasn't feeling well. And he said to me, guy, you're going to be afflicted. I didn't understand that until I woke up the next morning. I was paralyzed. I rolled out of my bed, tried to crawl. I was so sick. My temperature was 104 or something like that. But you know what he said to me? He said, you're going to be afflicted. I said, what, am I going to, what do you want me to do? He said, I'm going to heal you. I said, okay. He didn't heal me in my time. In fact, the next morning, my wife got up and went to the morning prayer meeting and said, please pray for my husband. And then one, a couple of my brothers came by, my, my brothers in Christ came by, and they rebuked the spirit of fear over me. And they carried me to the car because I couldn't dress myself. They dressed me, carried me to the car. My wife wanted to bring me to the hospital. I said, no. The Lord said he's going to heal me. I said, but we can go to the uh, local with a clinic and confirm my healing. We got to the clinic. I sat in there. They sent me right into the uh, doctor's office. They put the thermometer in my mouth. I was totally healed right before he stuck it in. Boom. We went out and had eggs and home fries, garlic and everything, man. I get wolfed. But he told me. Does everybody understand that? Listen, we, we get in accidents, we make mistakes and things like that we do stuff, we bump into stuff, you know. He's still our healer. No matter what. He's still our healer. He's still our deliverer. But the enemy will try to cause compromise to all of it. Does everybody get that? He's got to be first. If he's not, then you're first and you're not denying yourself. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Are we somewhere? Are we in John 15 yet? Did we read the whole Bible yet? (laughs) 
verse 1. Let's speak it. John 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Sometimes when the pruning comes, we think it's the devil. Does everybody understand? Now let me tell you, God will use the devil to train us up. He will allow certain things to happen to get our attention. Verse 4, he says, Abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Oh man, abide in me, abide in me. What's that? His presence, his presence, his presence. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Why? By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my what? Disciples. Powerful. We must be abiders. Amen? Colossians 3. Warning signs. Don't ignore them. Colossians 3 verse 1. Let's speak it together. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are where? Above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, your thoughts on the things above, not on the things of the earth. So what, you're, what he's saying is seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Find out what's going on on the other side. Get counsel, correction, and direction from the spirit realm, from Jesus. By the Holy Spirit. Before you make any other decisions. He said, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your what? Your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. In which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off these things. Anger. Man, you got an anger problem? Get that prayer booklet out and chase that spirit until it's gone. Pursue your enemies. You got a lust problem? Take that prayer booklet out and chase that spirit until it's gone. Wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. You got a perverse tongue? Chase that spirit until it's gone or tie it in a bowl. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of God who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is what? All and in all. We are hidden in Christ. Abide. Proverbs 2. Proverbs chapter 2. Is everybody okay? Are you getting it? Are you being renewed and remember? Being enlightened so we become more sensitive and discerning and detailed. Detail. Proverbs 2 verse 1. Let's speak it together. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to what? Understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment. And lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver, search for her for hidden treasure. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth, come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. 
then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity in every good path. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, and from those who leave the path of righteousness to walk in the ways of darkness. In other words, you won't follow. Amen? You won't follow. Just because somebody else is doing it, you won't follow. You'll follow the ways of the Lord, not the ways of man. And I'm going to close at Psalm 119. Psalm 119, starting at verse 1. Blessed are the what? Undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who what? Keep his testimonies, who seek him with a whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes, then I would be, not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will praise you with an uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. Verse 9. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have what? Sought you. And let me not wander from your commandments or what? Drift or compromise. Your word I have hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I rejoice in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes, and I will not forget your word of promise. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Lord, we just ask in the name of Jesus that you'll continue to quicken us and revive us and unction us so that we don't miss any warning signs of our personal life, of this nation and global, that we may be ready in season and out of season because we have followed your warning signs. So, Lord, visit us in dreams and visions. Show us what you want us to do and how you want us to do it. Grant us that wisdom and discernment so needed and bring healing to our bodies that we may be strong in the Lord and the power of your might and warn others in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.